Right, Good so morning. Good morning, 1313 Podcast. Welcome morning. back to the most mediocre Star Wars podcast on the internet. I'm Jacob. I'm Jackson. And I'm Tommy. We got a lot to talk about today. Yes. yes we do. First of all, very important. We switched seats today. This was impromptu. Based upon the topics that we're talking about, it was beneficial. I got to get up and move. <laughs> yeah. And I'm tired of Jacob getting up and moving over me. So I... I just switched. Yeah. He, he now Jackson's far away. He wanted to get as far away from me as possible. Or the leaning back. Stop it. Got me. I'm sorry. It's okay. Like... So, first of all, we have some housekeeping. Yes. Um, first and foremost, we want to thank everybody for the immense support that we've been getting on our recent podcasts. It's been so much fun interacting with everybody. And we've actually kind of developed a small community. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually came up with a name for you all. Since you are considered our regulars, you shall be known as the regs. <laughs> so this actually came about because um, we were talking about the people that come back and comment every single week. Because we have a, there's a handful of people that, that do that for every YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And I, I jokingly said to Jacob and Jackson, oh yeah, the regs. And they were like, oh, wait a minute. It's like, let's, let's keep that. So yeah, so that's what we're going to call our community. You guys are now known as the Regs. Um, so yeah, we're pretty happy about that. And yeah. then we have some other news as far as housekeeping. Ooh. Ooh. We have an updated upload schedule. Yes. So first and foremost, um, we are, like we have mentioned before, we're all college students. So I think next week, really, we all go back to school. Yeah, I move in this Tuesday. So right after the, this video comes out, the next day, like, I'm moving in. I move in this Saturday. I move in Wednesday. Wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we decided to come up with a more consistent upload schedule than mm -hmm. we have right now. That way, we can stay more consistent with our schoolwork and we can kind of plan ahead more. Mm -hmm. um, and then you guys can really have an expectation of what's coming. So Monday uploads will stay weekly. That will yes. not go away. Our regular episodes on Mondays will always stay the same. Um, and then habit chats will be moving to every other Thursday. Um, we've been kind of doing them almost every Thursday for the past month or so. Um, and that just was because we just had that many guests, but we decided for school, it's probably best to move that to an every other week schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have the specials kind yes. of like we did a vision special when we first started the podcast, mm -hmm. um, specials, we decided will be YouTube exclusives as opposed to posting them on anchor and everywhere else, mm -hmm. just because, um, they're going to be heavily video based a lot of the times because mm -hmm. we have ideas for specials, but all of them involve, um, a lot of video. Yeah. So we're going to make those, uh, they're not going to really have a set day of the week or a set, like, you know, we're not going to do them bi-weekly or like anything like that. Um, it's really just going to be a situation where we let you know the week of when we think a special will be coming out. And then you can expect that on YouTube exclusive to YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's, that's our more consistent upload schedule. Um, we'll put it in the description below as well for the YouTube and the anchor post. That way you guys know um, what our schedule is and you guys can tune in. Yeah. So do you want me to talk about Nicole as well with the room? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So currently right now, as we're shooting this, we have 85 subscribers. And we are absolutely thankful for that. Like we could not be so more surprised about like how like quickly we've grown and like how like everybody who watches this interacts. We absolutely love that. We're so thankful for you guys. So we have set a milestone. So as soon as we hit 100 subscribers, we will do a tour of the collection. That's like you've been asking. Us. You've been asking a lot. Yes, you have been asking. So I felt like it was fair to hit that and then we'll do it. Granted, I'm going to say right now, as soon as like immediately, as soon as we hit, I can't guarantee that it's going to be like, boom, immediately that out. Week. Just because we need to plan when it's going to come out. But just know as soon as we hit 100, we will shoot a video of the room tour. And that will be considered one of our new specials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I think as well, I'm going to show off my collection for a room mm -hmm. tour as well, because by the time um, that would end up coming out, we'll definitely be back in school. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And I keep all my collection 
in my apartment. Mm -hmm. So that would be that'd be a good chance for us to both show off all of our personal collections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I'll show and off mine as well. If you have any suggestions for the the video itself, like if you want to see us do like top five figures that we have in the room or like favorite items that we have in the room, leave a comment. Let us know what you'd like to see. Other than us just be like, these are the helmets. These are the lightsabers. <laughs> these are the figures. So you gotta let us know what you want to see. <clears throat> but yeah, thank you very much. Let's get to a hundred. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So, um, the Bad Batch, it came and it went. Yes. Yeah. The Bad Batch season one is concluded as yeah. of yesterday of recording this. Yes. So how do we feel? How do we feel about the Bad Batch? I feel like there is a lot of negativity for it, but I really, really like it. Listen, Star Wars fans, why. you guys are really making me upset. <laughs> I'm upset, and here's why. I saw this nice finale to a first season yep. of a multi-season show. Yes. Which really laid out an unexpected turn in a relationship between the main characters. Correct. I did not expect crosshair to a still be alive yeah and then b to decide to stay with the empire and then just part like go separate ways mm -hmm. i did not expect that <clears throat> and i think you could really feel the emotion yes if you were connected with the characters exactly and so <clears throat> star wars fans you have made me upset <laughs> because i feel like this show People were so focused on calling everything filler and saying that there were too yep. many cameos and blah, 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 to really get the heart of this show. Mm -hmm. Because this show has so much heart and soul to it. Mm -hmm. um, it it's honestly one of my favorite Star Wars media right now. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> here's the other thing as well that I feel like fans need to realize. Season one of The Clone Wars sucked. Season one of Rebels <laughs> wasn't that great. I mean, I love those shows, but if you just watch season one and only season one, you're not going to want to watch the rest. And that's intentional. Season one is built for character development. Now that we know that Bad Batch is going to be a multi-season show, I doubt it's going to like end at a second season. It might have three, it might have four. But now you have to think about the bigger picture. Dave Filoni built the world so then in the second season that's going to come out, we're going to see a ton of awesome things. That's exactly what happened with the Clone Wars and exactly what happened with Rebels. Got to be patient. Got to trust the process. It's Got better. to see it through, my boy. I think um, when we did our Habit Chat with Out of the Basement, Justin put it in a really good way. He said that people are spoiled with being able to just exactly. binge TV shows. Mm -hmm. So we, it's, it's, it really has been a long time and Disney plus, I like that about Disney plus exactly. they release episodes weekly. They mm -hmm. don't just give you like Netflix. will be like, here's the whole season. Watch the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, because whenever I binge a show, like I did that with one division because I didn't watch any of it until yeah. like there were two episodes left. Mm -hmm. And then over a span of two days, I binged the whole season and I didn't appreciate it until I went back and watched it a second time because you're just rushing to get through everything. You're exactly. not you're not appreciating the show and the little details, you know? That was that's what was <laughs> nice about WandaVision was each episode kind of left at a cliffhanger and then you had a week of speculation. So you were talking with your friends about it and you were looking on the internet about theories and things like that, just because it was just like like sprinkling just a little bit of what the situation really was. But if you just binge it all the way through, you have zero of that anticipation. You get instant gratification. And then you're just like, okay, that, so that's the answer. Mm -hmm. I like having spaced out, uh, not necessarily uploads, but like having the show come out weekly. Just because it gives you that time to digest it. You get to think about it. You get to talk about it. It's kind of like um, when I watched American Psycho with Jackson, he didn't necessarily like the movie until it was over and we started talking about it and we started talking about like what might have actually happened in the movie because the uh, ending of the movie is ambiguous it's open-ended so it leaves you to talk to your friends about it and it leaves you to interpret the ending mm -hmm. i like it when you can <clears throat> discuss a show with your friends and think about new theories and think about what happened in the show before the next episode comes out because not only are you more invested as a person into the show 
but then you and all your friends are more invested in it and it gives you like a reason to come back every week. You appreciate the characters more. You appreciate what happens more. It's just because you fall in love with it. Mm-hmm. You're able to, if you're able to, it's like my, cause dad, my dad is the teacher. He talks about how if you can explain something, you are like, you know it better. So it's like, if I can explain Star Wars to you, I can understand it a bit better. And if I can explain the Bad Batch and their character arcs to you, I understand the Bad Batch a little bit better. So I appreciate the Bad Batch mm-hmm. more. So I think people that just go on and on and talk about how it's filler, I don't like it. They don't, they're not talking about the characters and their development, so they don't appreciate it as much. I think also, you have to watch episodes multiple times mm-hmm. yep. to get a better understanding of the characters. You watch it once for pleasure, once to make citations. <laughs> yep. If I would have, I mean, I know I always talk about The Last Jedi, but it's because I like the movie so much. But again, if I only watched the movie once and that was it, I would not be where I am with the movie today. Mm-hmm. I love it so much because I've watched it again and again and again. And that's how anybody's favorite movie is. Exactly. Like my favorite movie is A New Hope. It's on my shirt right now. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> I, I've watched A New Hope probably over a hundred times. Mm-hmm. Just that one Star Wars movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you have to watch it again and again. And each time you'll pick up more bits and pieces. I also feel like we just, again, the internet and I know we've mentioned this before too. Mm-hmm. The internet just people see a word or a phrase, and that's it. That they they're they're automatically now the expert, and yep. they monopolize the two that I that kill me are character development yep. and filler. Yeah, mm-hmm. people will just use those two words, and they don't even use them in the right context. Yep. Mm-hmm. and it's like, dude, you don't. Well, there was no character development in this show, in this yeah. episode, in the finale, there was no character development. I'm like. There wasn't supposed to be. Define character development. Well, well, it's you. There's character development in the fact that you see them struggling, and then you see yeah. the realization of Crosshair. But you shouldn't have like these big moving like things in the in the finale. You have the whole season to develop your characters so that they're in the finale, and then they can change a little bit. But you don't want drastic changes in the finale. So there. Yeah. So just because you're not you're not seeing like Omega going from. I'm a little girl to I'm a cold blooded killer. That that's what people like want to define as character development. They want to see somebody go from A to B like that. <laughs> like like look at Ahsoka. People don't like Ahsoka. No, people hated Ahsoka. People no pe- on purpose it, though. The reason that the, it's not the reason that they like her is not because she's just all of a sudden a badass. Mm-hmm. No, people like her because they grew up with her. Mm-hmm. As a child, yeah. they watched the Clone Wars and they watched Ahsoka grow mm-hmm. from an annoying fourteen-year-old girl to this amazing character that she is now, and yes. that was intentional. Yeah, mm-hmm. I watched a, I watched a video essay on like the subtleties that Dave Filoni used to create her as a better character, and how just like stuck up, like arrogant and annoying she is in the first season, and it's in the episode where she's in the library, I believe, with the with that Jedi where she has yeah. to learn patience. That's the and one that's... where isn't that the one where Tara Sanube, or is that the one where Cad Bane breaks into the Jedi Temple? Uh, Tara Sanube, I think. Okay, yeah, I can't I can't remember exactly. He has the cane lightsaber. Yep. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's just. It breaks down her character a little bit, so she starts to understand, oh, if I'm patient, things work better. So it adds a little bit to her character, and then it just kind of snowballs, and she becomes better and better and better. It's better to see a character start, like, real crappy, and then have them get better, because that not only do you fall in love with their character, you learn to appreciate it. Because you, you see them come from the lowest place, and then you can maybe connect to that, and then you're like, I'm connected to this character, because we have something in common. Where... People didn't really feel that with Ray because within movies, it just seemed like she did just kind of like start to change over just little bits because they're like pieces that are in books that explain it a bit better. And there's also just the fact that uh, the continuity between two different directors didn't really go that well. But um, can we also talk about how that's just more realistic for characters as yeah. well? No if way. If you have a character that's literally a child or a, or a young teenager... Mm-hmm. And they make dumb decisions and do dumb things. That's kind of what children and young teenagers do. No way. They make decisions that they don't think about the long-term consequences. Mm. Like when Omega saves AZ in the episode, which by the way, AZ supremacy. AZ supremacy. <laughs> yes. AZ in the Bad Batch. AZ Let me just say it now. Deluxe Omega. It's going to be, yes, Omega will be a deluxe release. And she will come with, or she'll just be regular release because she's little. 
Maybe. She'll come with AZ. She'll come with her bow. She'll come with her calm that you can take on and off. And um, I think you're a bit hopeful for this figure. I'm I expecting am. just Omega AZ forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just more realistic for for small children characters mm-hmm. to make dumb decisions and uh, act like children. Mm-hmm. Why why do we expect like a ten year old? How old is she? Probably like ten or twelve. I would say. Yeah. Like. How do we expect her to act like an adult? She doesn't know how to be an adult. She's literally only lived with Nala Say mm-hmm. her entire life. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is why um, I was listening more to people in like the anime community. And this is why people didn't like Sword Art Online. <clears throat> it's because Kirito, the main character, he just, he gets into the show and he just, he makes all the right decisions and he's always a badass. He doesn't really have too much to develop. And that's why people are so annoyed with the show. Don't make fun of that show. Hey, I, I love that. I love that show. I'm not saying <laughs> don't make I don't, fun of my show. I'm not saying I dislike Sword Art Online. I've but never that's seen it. A, it's good. I would recommend it's it. Okay. But that's that's it's why okay. um that's why people dislike it is because they're just like he just he's a stagnant character and I'm like yeah I can understand that. Yeah. yeah. So again, if you don't like the Bad Batch, that's completely okay. We do not care. We, we do, do not, not care. care. But if if you don't like the Bad Batch and you just start slandering the show for reasons that I feel are are intellectual reasons (laughs) then if you give smooth brain reasons for not liking the Bad Batch then I'm going to speak up and I'm going to say something because I just feel like with this show especially with social media again social media sucks I mean if we didn't have social media we wouldn't be talking to you right now but social media does suck yeah and there's, it's just an echo chamber. Twitter, people just especially. love to hate things. And for some reason, people love to hate the Bad Batch. And I don't know why people expect so much from the first season of a multi-season. Raj Moses is online. Um, anyway. That's hunting, buddy. <laughs> so, was up and said, Yours that's mine. yours, Jacob. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Sorry. Anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I just... I think that people are just love to hate it. And for some reason, people love to hate the Bad Batch. But we love the Bad Batch. Yes. We don't we don't hate on the Bad Batch. Because guess what? The clones are our favorite characters in Star Wars. Oh, other than Thrawn. Yeah. Thrawn is awesome. Thrawn supremacy. But Thrawn also supremacy. AZ supremacy. Yes. AZ. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sick of Thrawn over AZ, though. I don't know. It's close for me right now. What? No, okay. <laughs> so there were kind of two things that I wanted to talk about the episode really quick yeah. before we move on, if that's okay. So first, no, one, I have stuff too. So oh, thanks. Yeah. So first one's about the clone on the vendor when Rampart was asking. Oh for the yeah, report. I like knew it when I saw the episode, and then I put on TikTok because there's always bad back spoilers on TikTok, and immediately was like the clone hesitating, and I was like, I knew he's it. Like, he's like, oh, the. <laughs> <laughs> he was upset. Bro, he was... please! <laughs> he was upset. He was really yes, upset. He was yeah. upset. Because the one who was given, like, the order to fire, like, didn't really seem to hesitate because he was like, okay, I guess. It's and like, the oh, Macron was upset. We made fire and ready. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. That was... Yeah, yeah, like, that, was yeah, yeah he, the, that clone was definitely upset. And I think that it just goes to show, for Rampart, this is just building his portfolio of why clones are obsolete, you know? Exactly. I mean, like, granted, I don't know if he noticed it, but he's definitely, I feel like, in the next season going to be, like, no more clones. All TK units. Rampart's definitely smart. There's no question about that. I think he picks up, because in the episode with, was it called Reunion, was it? Where Crosshair, no, that's the one where Crosshair gets his burns. Yeah. Um, Was it Devil's Deal with Hera? Yes, that was the one where uh, Hera gets out. So, in that episode... that's the first one. When they're in the turbo tank, Mm -hmm. and um, Chom and his wife come and save um, Hera, Rampart, they make a point to show that Rampart is noticing that Hauser is, like, hesitant, and he's, like, letting them break into the turbo tank. He's not calling reinforcements. He's waiting for comms to get jammed, and they make a point for rampart to notice that Mm -hmm. so i think he's very observant and i think that really he's just using this to build evidence as Mm -hmm. to why clones are obsolete Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i totally agree i would for the next season i would absolutely love to see where all the clones are going that's what that's the we will that's the one i think that might be like the big thing 
they're trying to find out where all the clones are. I feel like that might be the big story driving uh, thing. And I, I, I'm just guessing that probably at the end of the season, we're going to see them finding the Death Star. Now, uh, that's what I think. Now, that there's just going to be a conveyor belt of boys on, on Mustafar just going. <laughs> a couple <laughs> things that I loved. One of my, I think my favorite line in that episode was where um, Tech seems like he's defending Crosshair, and Crosshair asks him why he's defending him, mm -hmm. and Tech responds with, "Understanding you doesn't mean I agree with you." That is such a good Facts. line, not just in Star Wars, but in real life as mm -hmm. well. Exactly. That is such a good line. And I literally said out loud when I watched the episode, oh, I really liked that. Yeah, I really liked that as well, I feel like. Mm -hmm. It also just, that tech just seemed so, like, so much more personal mm -hmm. in that. In, and it, you can see that tech, because a lot, for me, I feel like tech has received the most, or the least development. I feel like he's been the least appreciated in this I feel season. Like Echo is though. Echo. Well, Echo had his development happen in the Clone Wars. Yeah. So his so development already exists. In Echo the is. Over. Echo is where he needs to be yeah. at this point in the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like Tech is kind of almost like a robot in the beginning of the season. You know, just follow the protocols. You know, <laughs> blah blah blah. And then uh, in this episode, he sticks up for Wrecker, mm -hmm. and he sticks up for Crosshair. Mm -hmm. You know, because. He's good at being objective. Mm -hmm. yep. mm, yeah. So I, I liked that about Tech because Tech is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I think my two favorites are probably Wrecker and Tech. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Really? Mm -hmm. But I really liked that. The, that new design for the clone commandos at the end of the episode with yeah. that, those gray markings. That those were sick. And that lab, that wasn't Daro, was it? No, know. that wasn't Daro. That was a com I'm pretty sure that was a completely Earth. different planet. Earth. Because Earth. it's basically a like a forest version of Camino instead yeah. of a water no, version. Well, it's Earth. Whatever planet it's on, I feel like it's going to be a brand new planet. Planet Earth. Though, definitely in the outer rim. Planet, planet Earth? Core. I think it's Earth. It's planet Earth. Planet Earth. Stop. Planet Earth? Planet Earth. Earth. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I want to get into Nala says what her experiments yeah. could be at, at, in a bit. But Pickled Snokes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, new Black Series figure. It's going to be um, a CVS exclusive. Um... Thirty-seven ninety-nine. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be that commando <laughs> with the oh my bad three hundred seventy ninety-nine. Um, it costs just as much as the Lego UCS Republic gunship, um, and it's you got different markings. Yeah, uh -huh. and each yeah. store will only get one case of three figures, and the only stores are gonna be in Norway. Yes, Norway. <laughs> you have to travel to Norway to get them, but it's it's okay. We're not we're not upset. We're not upset about the Black Series, Hasbro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll get into that later. Run. 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 <laughs> Run. Um uh I mean, again, Crosshair was amazing in this episode. Mm -hmm. This totally made up for barely seeing him at all this season. I agree. In my opinion, that was one of the things I was disappointed about was I didn't really get to see Crosshair and I did want to see him. And now we saw so much from him in these last two episodes and I just was he saved Omega. Yes. He cares about the Bad Batch. And personally, I don't think he got his chip removed. It's so hard to tell. Well, no, because he's still like... Yeah, when he sat there. down in Nalase's lab, he like grabbed his head like that. Well, I, uh, I, I, think, <laughs> I think <laughs> when, um, when he got his chip enhanced, they told him that they removed it. Or maybe he thinks it's gone because he got it enhanced. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Maybe he's just like... Um, this he way. cares about them. Yeah. He really well, then, does. Here's like the big thing that I have on Crosshair as well, because I was like thinking about this for the entire day and like what mm. I was going to say. But essentially, I feel like the whole purpose of the Bad Batch is to like show us that like clones are, aren't just like the same exact thing, that they can think for themselves. And that's what the Bad Batch is trying to do. They're trying to think for themselves. And now we have Crosshair who's developed where he's like, well, I'm going to think for myself, and it's like, this is really what I would like to do. Yeah. I know it's like, you don't all like it, but this is what I want, because this is what I feel like gives me a purpose, where you guys feel like running errands for Sid and helping Rex and whatever is giving you a purpose, you know? So I feel like through all that, they were finally, Crosshair was able to finally find himself and become an individual, and just because now he's in, in an individual, 
Just because he is an individual doesn't mean that he has to be an enemy of the Bad Batch. He can go out on his own, but that's his own personal choice now. Mm -hmm. I was really thinking, because, like, it seems like, like, for the finale, this has nothing to do with what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was really expecting to see Darth Vader at the at that ending, just because. To... Nah. It just seems like a trope of Star Wars to be like, we, we shall throw Darth Vader in the end. They didn't pull a Rogue One or And I also one. thought that, that cloner... Just like the I don't human know one, what, yeah. I no. thought I thought she might be Doctor Afra, but I'm kind of deciding against that now. No, but it'd be cool to see Doctor Afra. Be dope in Bad Batch. They might do it. They might. Cool. Maybe not. But yeah, I uh, I really liked Crosshair. Yeah. I also like that he is upset that they left him. Mm -hmm. I know, because I was like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was upset. Know. He was like, like he's like, you guys left me. He's like. They don't leave their behind most of the time. I was like, oh, I'm like oops. But then that's the other thing as well. They left him because that's what he said he wanted to do. It's like, bro, they're trying to like let you go. If you want to go with them, communicate with them. Also, he definitely has a soft spot for Omega. She um, really was getting getting to him. Yeah, because she there. saved him. She did. Yeah. Yeah, that thing is like, well, maybe she's not And that's that. what I like about Omega. People, uh, that's a complaint that a lot of people have about the show is, is that Omega, well, Omega is too, like, virtuous. She always tries to save everybody. And it's like, yeah, because she's a kid. Yeah. Yes. You know, that's, that's normal for her. She needs to be a killer. Yeah. Always. We need her to be a cold-blooded killer. Ga 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 ga. We don't want little Saw Gerrera. We already have Saw Gerrera. And he Sa pops up in every piece of media. And the yeah. reason for Saw Gerrera is to be in the extremist of the rebellion. Yes. There's, that's his That's his character trope. That's yes. what he does. Shows us why people didn't agree with the rebellion and why they were reluctant to have the Empire. Because there were people like Saw Gerrera who yes. are so militant about it. And they thought that just killing and destroying everything was the answer. Yep. And... It, it's, I'll make the Empire pay for what they've done. If I see Sagar in one more piece of media, I'm losing it. Borgullet! That's, that's going to be an episode next season. They're going to help Sagar get Borgullet. Stop putting <laughs> Sagar in Star Wars and not making a Black Series 4 of him. It's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> it's not only, so stupid. Not only is he in Rogue One. Not only is he in Rebels. Not only is he in Jedi Fallen Order. Not only is he in Clone Wars. Four pieces of Star Wars. And media. the Bad Batch. And the Bad and Batch. And the Bad Batch. That's five. <laughs> bad Batch. And he doesn't have a bad figure. Batch. And he doesn't have a figure. I'm not going to buy it anyway. I'm just going <laughs> to need it for this collection. Because it would look good. I'm not but I'm gonna not going to buy, buy it. It. <laughs> it would be so cool to get him as a figure, though. <laughs> but yeah, I... Stinky has, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like... Like, there are just complaints about this show where I'm just like, huh? Because they don't make sense. Like, people were like, all the finale was was them arguing. But yeah, but wasn't everybody complaining that we didn't get to see Crosshair at all? And so now we finally get Crosshair's perspective and his opinion on everything? See, let the haters hate because as soon as, like, the Bad Batch and all of its entirety with its different seasons and whatever come out and it finishes. Everybody is going to say that it was Ooh, such a great show. The Bad was Batch was great! And it's just as good as Clone Wars. Maybe <laughs> competable with Rebels in some cases. <laughs> People are going to say that crap because that's what they did with Clone Wars. Because it's trendy. Wait a minute. That's what people really did with Rebels. Yes. People used to yes. crap on Rebels. I used to be embarrassed to tell people I liked Star Wars Rebels. But it's great. That show is phenomenal. I never watched it when like it came out on Disney XD we just watched, because we watched like the first season for like half of it and then we just got busy. We got it was, busy. It was that period of time where we, we we were Star Wars fans, but we weren't Star Wars fans. <laughs> so um, Yeah, but that's the fact though. But that I watch we watched the entirety later and we we're like, bro, if I'd have just watched this when it came out. I watched the first few episodes as they came out. I remember back in like, when did it come out? Like 2014 or 2013? Mm -hmm. I watched them with my brother on Disney XD mm -hmm. like every week. And then we got like three episodes in and I just was not into it. Mm -hmm. I watched the Tatooine Mall episode on Disney XD when it came out. I remember I did that. But that was literally it because I was like, oh, it's Dark Mall. I remember I had the fight between Ahsoka and Vader spoiled for me. And I didn't know that the, that, that yeah. was in Rebels. I saw like just a video of the fight. 
I was like, I would have really have to watch this show. So I went and I watched the show, and now it's probably like it's tied with Clone Wars, and it, and it's some cases it gets a little bit ahead of Clone Wars. But I I like Clone Wars so much more just because it's a nostalgia factor yep. and stuff. But Rebels is phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's such a good show. It, Watch and the it fact, if you haven't seen it. And the fact that we're getting a, a somewhat continuation of it in the Ahsoka show. And we're getting a live action Thrawn. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Let's go! Let's go! Alright, so All right. last thing I want to talk about about this episode of the Bad Batch. say. What are your theories on her experiments? Because I have my three that I think are like either plausible or certainly will happen. Sure. I mean, Snoke, Death Troopers, and that's it. Jacob. Yes. I, um, this isn't resorting to Bad Batch, but what if we see her in The Mandalorian? She's probably dead by then. Her neck is going to be all droopy. (laughs) She probably. Grant, we don't know how Cam- how long Cam and Owens live, but think about the timeline. Because mm-hmm. then Mando's after Return of the Jedi. Yeah, but they clone him. They could at least name drop her in Mando. I don't know. Because it, it seems like she's going to be responsible for figuring out how to clone uh, Force Sensitives. That seems to be the, the thought line that's going to go on. Mm-hmm. Either that or they might do like, uh, like we said, it's like, what, Squad 99? Task yeah, Force, Task, Task Force, Force 99. 99. That was one which of my is theories. Is which that. is canon. Thank you, Justin, from Out of the Basement. Yes. Um, but yeah, I I think Task Force 99, whether it's clones, whether it's exact replicas of the Bad Batch, or whether it's just... Enhanced TKs. Enhanced TKs. I think it'll be TKs. I think that that is something that would probably happen. I also think Death Troopers, because those are cybernetically enhanced humans. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's basically a science experiment. Mm. And then I also, I think the big obvious one is Palpatine clones. Pickled yeah. Snokes. Pickled Snokes. Yeah. In the jar. Because yep. that was the other thing about the Death Trooper 2 from that we found out in the new season of Mando, was that Moff Gale was all like, we found the issue with the Death Trooper was the person inside, so that's why it's a machine now. You know? Moff so, Gideon was also saying... We need it. We don't have a donor with a higher M. Oh no, that was the doctor. Yeah. We don't have a donor with a higher M count. Mm. Midi chlorians. Ah, midi chlorians. Remember when that was the most controversial thing in Star Wars? Yep. Mm-hmm. Could we go back to that, please? <laughs> Grant said, "I I agree with them in some facts where the Force could have just been like the physical thing that didn't really need explaining, but they they took it and ran with it and they they made some cool content out of it." So. So the Bad Batch. You don't care. The Bad Batch. The last time we talk about the Bad Batch on the podcast. It is not going to be the last time. We will like, mention it again. We will mention it again. It'll come up in parallel conversations. It'll come up in parallel conversations when yeah. we speak on movies, content, yeah. anything to go with the Clone Wars prequels and other things. Indeed. Indeed. And now, we have Jacob and his Legos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Part like two. the last season of the Bad Batch, we got to show you goodbye. Until next year. Until next year. Now. Okay. <laughs> We get a week break and then we get visions. And then we're going to talk about visions every single day on the podcast. Visions. That's insane. I have visions that this show will be good. (laughs) Anyway. So So it's Jacob and his Legos, part two. And this time we got a big old Jonah show. It's so big. I don't want to break it. So this is the UCS gunship. It's absolutely massive. People in the promo images holding it like this. So you can, can drop it. It's the same size as my torso. I might drop it. If I drop Don't it. Don't drop it. If, if I drop it, we'll make that the thumbnail and the title. It's such a behemoth. It's so I, I don't, If anybody follows us on Instagram, I've been posting my mm-hmm. progress on our Instagram story on the podcast. I've been, I did some live streams of mine, but um, yeah, there will be a, a full review of this, like a special video that will be coming That'll out. That'll also be a special. Sometime in the future. I just have, I have to film it and edit it still. But, um, no, you have my whole thoughts on this and entirely, there's one thing that I don't know if you've experienced in your build, but there's one part that kind of ruined the rest of the build for me just because of how infuriating it was. I will go into that in the review, but no, this is the UCS gunship. This is the stand it comes with, with the two minifigures that nobody asked for, but we got it anyway. Uh, <laughs> It's not that big of a deal at this point. It's it's all about the build. It's not about the main figures. It ruined my love for Lego Star Wars. Probably what I'm going to do 
is because I'm I need to condense all my my Lego collection. I'm gonna put all my clone troopers and stuff in in the gunship. Ah. I thought that would be cool. But yes, this is my little Lego segment. This is the gunship. It is huge. It's ginormous. If Absolutely anyone massive. has ever had a three and three quarter inch scale Republic gunship toy, it is bigger than that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have ours right up there. She a, she a thick boy. Not um, quite six inch scale, but definitely has zero swoosh ability. If you try, you will break it. Yeah. So. It's a display piece. It's yeah. a display and piece. And that's why I bought it. And I think I'm about to break it. Oh, it's breaking. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. It's oh, falling. falling. It's falling out. <laughs> <laughs> help. Can I get some help putting this back on the stand? I'll, I'll hold down the fort over here. I just I need you to scoot the stand out a little bit. So right it's... now, the one of the front bubble turrets fell off, as well as the back turret. I can't see the white piece that's trying to stick it up. Oh, wait, there it is. Okay. Crisis averted. That was Whoa. fun to watch. Tommy said, ah, uh, let's watch him suffer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I'm upset. I'm upset. Are we going 50, in, are we going into disrespect. <laughs> we going into so our oh, Jacob, we're going into that Double section. Check. The, the we're going to the Black Series. Jacob, Welcome to the segment of the podcast where we talk about the Wax Series. <laughs> the Wax Series. <laughs> the Wax. Because, because everything that comes out of Hasbro at this point, whack. The Wax your Series. Your tear, whack. Your drip, whack. The way that you stand, whack. The way that they <laughs> smile, whack. Me, the I'm tight as heck. <laughs> the way you only repaint figures and repackage it as gaming greats, whack. The way you have a Saw Gerrera figure, Whack. The way you think that we did a Billy and Luke Skywalkers? Whack. So, earlier the this week... The price hikes? Whack. <laughs> earlier this week, it came out that the MSRP for Hasbro's products yes. is going up again. And it just went up a few months ago. It did. So, at first, since the line came out, figures were nineteen ninety nine, And then a few months ago, they started being twenty two ninety nine. Mm -hmm. And then exclusives went from being, what, twenty four ninety nine to twenty six forty nine to like the prices have been all over the place. And then mm -hmm. for some reason we have a Captain Rex that's thirty one forty nine, and he's just a Captain Rex with a poncho. And I bought three, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and that's why they made it that price because they knew it was gonna sell. This price hike is effective immediately. Yeah. So if you have any existing pre orders with Hasbro or most major retailers. Get your wallets ready because you're about to be broke. Regular figures are going from $22.99 to $24.99 yep. with applicable tax. Yep. And then exclusives are going from $26.49 to $29.99, which is the old price of a deluxe figure. Yep. And then deluxe figures are $39.99. They shot up to California prices. Dude. Might as well get hot toys because they're like the same price at this point. Well, then here's the thing. Oh, if you're going to go. No, I, my only thing was Hasbro is saying that this is because China keeps upping their shipping rates. Move your factories to America then. That's political. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say, Jake? It's just like at this point, don't buy your figures from Hasbro Pulse ever again. Buy them from somewhere else because that's the reality is that It'll oh, it's gonna be this new price on Hasbro Pulse, but if you can buy it through Walmart or Target, just get it there because it's gonna be cheaper. It's also gonna show up before Pulse because exactly every single one of my Pulse pre-orders, and and I mean every single one, gets pushed back at least two months. Yep. And everyone else will have it. Other websites will get multiple restocks, and the for some reason, some I'm a pre, I'm a Pulse Premium member. Yep. I pay for free shipping. I, I, I pay for free shipping. Do you realize how dumb that sentence sounds? Yep. I pay $50 a year so that I can get exclusive access to Pulse exclusives and I can get free shipping on all my orders. But what's the point of getting all free shipping on all my orders if I'm never getting my orders? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, I mean, like, literally the only figure I have on Pulse right now is Costco, just because I got that way. But then I got rid of the tech because I was able to find them at Walmart. But it's like, Unless it's an exclusive for Pulse, I'm not going to buy from Pulse again. That is literally just the reality. No, and, of the and I and I have such a better time. I'm a GameStop like um, rewards member yeah. with GameStop. 
I get so many more perks for ordering stuff through GameStop. Yeah, but My GameStop, GameStop ups the prices by three dollars. They up the price, but then the they do. But I get a five dollar off coupon once a month. I get you know I get so I get points that I can use on every single order that I can use to get free stuff. Yeah. It it just, and and I always get my stuff first mm-hmm. way before pulse exactly and the way before. channels do it too because it's like i i'm gonna check dork side later but i intentionally pre-ordered that 501st uh archive wave trooper because it says it's supposed to come in august it's and not. then it might not come in august it might come in september but if it does that whole wave isn't supposed to come out until december so like I know I'm gonna get it early because it's Dork Side and the fan channels pull through Dork Side, Big Bad Entertainment Earth, the big three. It it's just it's so annoying because there's a price hike exactly. again and like it's getting to the point where I don't know if I can keep collecting. I'm don't a college say that because we will keep. <laughs> well, listen, I'm a college student. I'm not yeah. made of money. Like mm-hmm. I I work a ton so that I can collect action figures. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know if I'm going to be able to anymore. You're telling me, so if you sign up for the army, then they'll send you money while you're at college <laughs> every month. So I'm like, hey, gov- <laughs> the government pays me to buy Black Series, but that's how I'm rolling. But <laughs> it's just start for me until next year. So Legos is going to be difficult. <laughs> it's just so annoying. Like it's it's like it's absurd because mm-hmm. the prices are so high and yep. they keep going up. And they're just going to keep releasing figures. And if they keep doing exclusives, then I'm paying $30 per figure. And by the way, most of it's reuse. So you know what? If you're going to keep hiking up the prices, Hasbro, how about you make the figures like a little bit more original? How about you try a little bit harder on paint applications? How about you try to make the figures a little bit more accurate to the entertainment? Here's also make them shiny. As part of my, I, I hate taking off the helmets and seeing a real shiny boy like he's all I hate boiled that up. New thing. Just you can you have a matte spray you could use you could just spray on them at home. But you know when when we're playing forty dollars for a deluxe figure, you would think that the makers would go yeah. through the trouble of just. <laughs> just other it on there. As well. I'm not the bean counters, and I'm not the big person behind the scenes, so I don't know obviously what's going on in the entirety. But why are we also not seeing this for other companies? Because it, the reality is, is when you're living in America, most of our goods are from China. That's how the industry has been made over the past couple decades. It's the reality of the situation. So why aren't we seeing that for other things? Maybe like Funko, because that's also made in China. And those are plastic as well. Again, I don't know the whole situation. But then the other thing as well is that we could reach a point where... Speak later. Okay. We could reach a point where the shipping on this isn't as bad as it was before because this crisis goes down a bit. But then the reality of the situation is Hasbro won't p- put the price back down. It's going to go up in stamp. They will never bring it back down because if this issue gets resolved in a year, they're going to keep it at that price because people are going to keep buying their figures at that price and they're going to sell out at that price. So they're going to be like, why would we ever make it less when we can make a little bit more extra in our back pocket? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, if this is the case and it's a Hasbro thing, why haven't we seen price hikes on G.I. Joe, Power Rangers, Fortnite figures, and any other thing that Hasbro makes? Well, we haven't seen it yet, but everybody's seen... saying they're predicting it's, it's going pre- to happen. It's predicted it's going to happen, but the fact that if it really was because of shipping, it would happen to all of them at once. Yes. I it, I, I believe that it has nothing to do with shipping. Everybody else in the world can get their stuff out at the same price. It's just a little bit later. I fully believe that it's Hasbro hiking the price just so they can fill up their pockets just a little bit more. And I'm disgusted. <laughs> well, here's the thing as well. Star Wars is Hasbro's biggest property as well. So, you know, I mean, like, granted, again, I'm not the bean counter, but I feel like Marvel Legends also does really well. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, again, we would have seen the same thing done from Marvel Legends if it was like that big of a deal. Because why are you only doing it for Star Wars? They could only do it for Star Wars because it's the biggest property and they'll make a little bit of extra money that they need. So then they don't need to do it to the rest of the properties. I'm just... I'm just burned out because I love collecting Star Wars action figures and there is nothing comparable to the Black Series. Nope. There is nothing in that, in the $20, what used to be the $20 price range yep. that you can get action figures for that are the six inch scale. Cause I don't want the three and three quarter. I like the nope. six inch mm-hmm. and it's like, there is no alternative. There is no, exactly. I can't go 
oh, well, then I'll just collect from a different retailer or a different mm-hmm. company. No, I can't because Hasbro is the only one. Exactly. And you know what I mean? It's it's just, it's so frustrating. Like, I don't, like, I really don't know if I can keep up collecting, if they're just going to keep dropping tons of figures exactly. and keep hiking the prices up. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't do that. Because that's my, also, why didn't it happen to the Vintage Collection? It only happened in the Black Series because that was the point that they made. But then that's the other thing as well. I don't want to start collecting the vintage. I used to. So like uh, a couple days ago, because Jacob originally tried getting me a vintage Rex and it finally came in the It's on the wall. Remember well, that story I told where the uh, where, where Walmart canceled my pre-order? Well, we got them a billion years later. Not from Walmart, though. Here's the figure. We don't have a zoom in right now. So I'll just, I'll just do this. We'll I have mine out of box. But it's like compared to the Black Series one, it's like night and day because I was honestly a bit frustrated. I love Rex. I really like the figure and I love it to death. So thank you, my dad and Jacob, for getting it for me. But the figure can't even hold its guns. Like literally it sits loose and it wants to like twist out. Like it can't But how come back in the day the Clone Wars figures could all hold their guns no problem? I'm like, this is Different absolutely material. disgusting. It's a quality. It's a it's a quality issue. It has nothing to do with, you know, limitations or cost, you know, cost of production. Exactly. Got, got old phase one Cody right here. Don't know where the helmet went. And that's ten year old Jacob's bad. But um yeah, it's the they feel completely different. Like the plastic on them is just like yeah. it's 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 different, but everything feels like still feels good. And this mm-hmm. figure is like what ten years old at this point? More than that. that. All the jo- the joints aren't loose whatsoever. Exactly. It's everything looks good. the The paint of the face hasn't rubbed off from taking on and off the helmet a billion times. It's like these figures were good. Why did you change the formula? Yeah, because even the what... even the face isn't that bad. Like especially, it's made animated. Yeah. Yeah. It's made animated, yeah. Because I'm upset because I would really like to have posed that Rex, but I'm not going to pose it in fear that I'm going to lose his blasters because it's going to knock, it's going to fall over somehow because that's the fate of all figures. They're going to fall over. <laughs> and then his blasters are going to come out of his hands and I'll never find them They'll again. get eaten by the carpet monster. They'll get eaten by the carpet, my dog. I'll lose him in my, in my dorm room and they'll get vacuumed up. It's like, it's the reality of the situation. It makes me sad, but... Mm. If you I'm have just... Black Series, keep your dogs away from them. Yep. Our Soka figure fell down not too long ago, and one of his lightsabers has been missing ever since. I looked everywhere, and I think the dog is the culprit. Yes. So now I'm like, great, now I have to buy a whole new figure just so I can have that other lightsaber. A figure I... that they will not make again, because... That's one thing I don't get. Why is it, like, if a figure sells out and they only make it in one wave... Why not make it again if it was so popular? Like why? Again, I'm not a, I'm not the guy that wears the suit and sits at the table. You know, I don't make the decisions. Lego does it though. So, I mean, <laughs> Le- I don't know. Like Lego will sell out of a product and then they'll remake it cuz they know they will make more money off it. I just don't I'm not I'm not the guy who sits at the table. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's probably a reason for it that I don't understand. But I just really wish that they would be more transparent with the community Mm -hmm. because that's the most frustrating thing is they just give us information whenever they feel like it and we just have to take it or leave it there is never any there are never questions answered they're never like you know they're they always if you do ask a question they always have a real political answer to give well you know we appreciate our our retailers that we do exclusives with very much and and you know we really appreciate them and they do such a good job but but i was asking where why there are so many exclusives that was the question you know we really appreciate our retailers we really like how they gave us more money i'm sorry but i gotta say stuff later when we do the next part of the black series segment today about uh store exclusives that i think you guys are gonna hate me for all right well i'm done complaining we can move on to the next part what is the next part so as you all know from Yak's post a week ago, next year will be the 20th yeah. anniversary of Attack of the Clones. That's so crazy. That's just, so, I feel old. Because I'm freaking, because when I think about it, next year I'll be 21. So I'm like, crap, like this is crazy. But um, I'm really excited because, again, talk, Attack of the Clones is one of my favorite movies because Django Fett is one of my favorite characters ever. So we kind of have some predictions about what some figures that they could possibly do top could five be. top, top five. five it's not necessary predictions it's more what we want yeah what we want if we were to do predictions if we were to repack, do predictions, repack, 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 it's repack. gonna be repacks i'm sorry mace windu again uh battle droid 
Phase 1 Clone Trooper, repacks of the Obi-Wan and Anakin that we already have. Yeah. And okay. then Jar Jar. So here's the part because, that you guys are going to yeah. hate me for. Because inevitably, and I hate to say it, is that we're going to get exactly what we got for, I feel like, The Phantom Menace. It's going to be four or five figures in a special packaging based on the film. And it's going to be just basic characters. So, I mean, like, I really feel like we're going to get another, we're going to get a Count Dooku repack because that's been in the red line forever. And there's literally nothing wrong with the figure. It is perfect. It's a good figure. So they just have to remake it and use the mold. So then we're going to get uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan probably from episode well, the, two. Don't forget, they have the galaxy art. But they're not going to do... Two. The only galaxy art that they have are the um, Lieutenant and then the Phase 1 regular clone yeah. trooper. But I don't feel like they'll use the galaxy art because they use vintage packaging. But then they'll have an excuse to then do galaxy art for Attack of the Clones. Right, later. yeah. Mm-hmm. But this is where it comes in. I feel like there are key characters we would really like to see. And to prevent it only being those four, they should do a wave of store-exclusive Attack of the Clones figures. I hate to say it, but if they did that... That could guarantee that we get more obscure figures in more figures from Attack of the so, Clones in general. So, if it's true that the business model at Hasbro is that if they didn't do store exclusives, those figures simply would not get made, I can't believe I'm saying this. Then I would be okay. No, actually, I'm not going to say that because <laughs> I would not be okay. I'm How okay about you that. just make the figures? Make them. Who they won't cares? Work. Make the figures. I'm going to give my top five okay. plus a runner up. This is my wish list that I know will not be met. I know a single figure on this list will not be an action figure next year. Here we go. Let's go. Number one, Zam Wessel. That would be cool. With an with a interchangeable face to make her um, Changer. a changeling. That's too much to ask. Number two, a Geonosian or Poggle the Lesser. That would be I would like to have idea. one of those. Um, it'd be super cool. It'd be all new mold. I'm assuming that would probably be a deluxe release. Um, actually, my last two would definitely be deluxe releases as well. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it'd be cool because it'd be a new gun, new character. You could take the wings on and off. Mm-hmm. Articulation would be kind of weird, though, because of those legs. Yeah. Number three, Padme. I want Padme, but not in her Geonosis Arena outfit. Padme has so many cool outfits in that movie, and I think it'd be cool to have a new Padme figure. Mm, Padme is so underappreciated in Star Wars media. Mm. Number four, Super Battle Droid. Yes, that is a must. Super Battle Droid deluxe release with an interchangeable rocket arm or something. Mm -hmm. That's a figure we've been begging for forever and it's essential just make it just make it please it's an army builder you'll make stupid money on it and then number five this is this one might be more than an exclusive it might like you know be maybe like a vehicle pack i want a six inch droidica that would be cool droidica would be dope you could give him like a bubble shield that you could like sit in the bubble shields in the movie up they did episode two in um, episode one, they did. In episode two, they didn't. And then in episode three, they did. Oh. You remember? You're right. Because that? Right. that, it didn't make sense when I watched it as a kid. But. So, and then my runner up is just this is like one that I know they won't make it. I would love to see Dexter Jetster. Yep. Yeah. And Dexter then. would be perfect. Because, yeah. okay, because then and if they Cam make it. Mm-hmm. If they make a Dexter figure, then they can make a uh, Pong Crow figure. Facts. So, like, my my five would definitely have to be. I would, I would buy a Pong Crow. I would totally buy a Pong yeah. Crow. Yeah. Everyone would. I would like to see Dexter. Yep. I would le- like to see the Kamen Owens. I would like to see the Super Battle Droid. I'd like to see the camera come back and focus. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Bring it back. Yep. Yep. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, we're good. <laughs> but, um, where was I? Uh, Super Battle Droid. Yep. I would like to see a different clothing app or different, like, just mold for Padme. Yep. And then my deluxe figure that I would love to see. I would like to see Django Fett with Young Boba. I feel like that would be an awesome two pack. Yeah, hey, Boba. And then they would. What's we? I would like to see not Django Fett in his armor since we have two of those. I would like to see him in just like his undergarment. That'd be dope. I that's that a fig- cool. that's a figure. That I would be a good cool. deluxe because the difference between the Django Fett in the red box line because that one is Django Fett when he's on Genesis. 
And then the version that we got from Star Wars Bounty Hunter, well, then there's only the Django from Star Wars Bounty Hunter. The one from Star Wars Bounty Hunter would be similar to what we see at the beginning of the movie, but just different paint. Slightly, but I don't know. Mm. So I feel like part of my top five, I'm not going to repeat what you guys said because I'm going to try to go with different stuff. We need Jedi. They're Jedi that are in this, that we that they have in the vintage collection, like Bear Sophie, Luminata Unduli, Keanu yeah. Mundi. Shakti! They need Sekira. to do Yoda. We have not seen a prequel Yoda figure. I feel like that would be a Actually, on my movie. shelf, I have the 40th anniversary ESB Yoda, and I took his belt off, and I tried to flare out his cloak to make him look like prequel Yoda. See, we don't ha- we we do have prequel Yoda on our shelf. We have the, <laughs> we have the TVC Clone Wars one where he looks cracked out. <laughs> yeah, but that's the Jedi are absolutely essential. I feel like we will get a clone, but then here are my predictions for it. So we already have the Phase One uh, regular Grunge. white clone. They did that in the Attack of the Clone packaging. Same with the Lieutenant. They just did a re-release on Amazon of the Commander Phase One Trooper that has the yellow in that out. four pack. So my prediction could be is that we might be able to see the sergeant and the captain clone again because they have not done that since the blue box. And I feel like that would make the most sense because, yes, the um, commander is still in the red box wave. They kind of like just like restocked that. So why are you going to do that again? So maybe do a different color for the trooper. I feel like that would be a really good idea. One that I would like to see that will never, ever, ever happen that I was putting in the group chat because is he isn't in Attack of the Clones, but do a phase one Rex. What about um Republic Gunship clone pilot? That would be a good that would idea. Be cool. That'd be a cool figure. That would be something that would have been that would have been a figure that Lego should have done. Okay, we're not gonna get into that. <laughs> Here we go again. I'm not gonna go into it other than Lego. That be would better. be cool. But again, there's key Jedi that we're missing. People in the Black series who collect the Jedi would love to see Jedi. And I mean, that's the same thing as well, because we don't have that many. I know I'm looking away from the mic, sorry, but we only have uh, Plo Koon, Mace Windu, uh, Kit Fisto, Anakin and Obi. Obi. And that's literally it for prequel Jedi. So it's like, yeah, we have the Attack of the Clone version of Anakin and Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn as well, but Qui-Gon's... But it's like, can we just get... like? I know it won't be all of the Jedi, and that's the reality, because here's the thing as well. They won't give us all the Jedi here, because they will give us Jedi in the Revenge of the Sith anniversary. Yeah. So we have to be patient. And the counterpart murderer. That'd be cool. Dude, I cannot wait for the 20th anniversary of Revenge of the Sith, and to be disappointed by not a single Black Series, Wax Series release. Wax series release. Well, no, I would love to see for a Revenge of the Sith thing. I would like to see a Haslab of like the Jedi interceptors, like the starfighters at the beginning yeah, of the movie. Yeah. Those are hands down my favorite ships in the entirety of Star Wars. And if we got a Black Series one of that, I would be happy because it it wouldn't be impossible to do. It'd be the same size as the snow speeder. Yeah, it would. It wouldn't be impossible. I would back that that drone in a, in a heartbeat. But yeah, I feel like there is a lot of good that they could do with the Attack of the Clones release. But we're going to have to see what their mindset is when they do it, what's going to happen, you know? And how disappointed we're going to be. I expect nothing. I, I literally expect, like, some store exclusives that are repacked. I expect cool boxes with old figures that we already have. <laughs> but we'll see. I mean, like, again, I'm hopeful that maybe they could do something. Isn't because... that sad, though? The fact that they're going to come out with an entire new line. And as a community of collectors, we are loathing it coming out. Because we know that we're going to be disappointed. It's, it's, like, it's sad. It really is. Be better. But again, like I said, like, I, I can only complain so much. Because there is nothing else that I could collect that's comparable to the Black Series. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There's I nothing. mean, you could get model kits, but... Those are so Model expensive. Kits are expensive. And then I follow Clone Customs on Instagram. And it's like... He literally has all the Jedi, basically every single clone trooper that you could ever see. But we're talking, it's like a hundred bucks per figure, which to be fair is his own custom work that he's personally making. And they're good quality custom figures. They look like they were made by Hasbro. Look like they were made by someone else other than Hasbro, I should say, because they look better. But it's like the figures are just great quality. And it's like, 
I can't dump that kind of money into my collection to pick up figures that we will never have. You know what I mean? I agree. I 100% agree with you. Unless I'm a millionaire someday, then I will do it. But for now, I will be content with the clones and the figures that I have. Mm -hmm. I love my collection. My collection is 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 super cool. Like it's really fleshed out right now. Mm -hmm. I like my collection a lot. I think we got a pretty good collection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's also like at the same time, please Hasbro, we're 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 begging you. We're begging you to please listen to the community and at least give us some answers. Like exactly. we like I mean, when was the last time we got like a an announcement on like a regular wave for the black series We're i don't count archive september. archive doesn't count yeah we'll get another um hasbro stream in september do you think they're waiting the for the con to yes 100 percent. they're waiting for the con so they can talk about what i feel like is going to be the next wave which is going to be echo omega and a few of the um Pokemon omega is going to be a target exclusive echo will be they're supposed to an be an exclusive next somewhere. Don't That's what Yak make, has in his post. Please don't make Echo an exclusive. I want that figure way it's too to bad. It's just said that it wants to get it. <laughs> because in Yak's thing, he has the pipeline and then like upcoming. And in the upcoming section are, I forget if it's four or five. But it's basically just Bad Batch and Book of Boba figures. I feel like that's going to be the last line that we get for this year. That we will see like announced and it'll come out in 2022. Hard to believe that the year is going to be ending so quick because we look forward to Black Series all year. But the point is, is that we're going to get an announcement of one more wave plus those um, Hascon exclusives like Trapper Wolf and the rest of those soon. So it's just waiting, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So another thing that I really wanted to touch on as well, really quick, is if you missed out on the Target exclusive Clone Wars figures, mm. go back to the Target app, find the figures, set notifications when they come out, because they are restocking them now randomly. So the only figure that I need for my personal collection unboxed is Echo, because I have a whole collection in box and almost an entire collection out of box. And so literally, as of recording today, it had to be three or three days ago, um, I was in bed and it was 11 o'clock at night, Eastern Standard Time. And I was just scrolling through TikTok on my phone and I got a notification from Target saying that Echo is in stock, sold out instantly. And I was like, frick. So then literally yesterday I was brushing my teeth and I put my phone down in the other room and I got a notification on my smartwatch saying that Echo is in stock. And I sprinted to my room and it was out of stock. Because You're that's- bonding it again. Yes. That's the unfortunate part as well, is that- if you want to pick up the rest of this Clone Wars line, you actually might be able to. However, Echo is the one figure that is being bought it because people want Echo and they want to make Fives, Customs, and Jessies. So that's the unfortunate part that you have to compete with. But if you want Hawk, Obi-Wan, or Anakin, you should be able to get it if you missed out. So this is your last chance. Be sure to do that. I can't give you a time that they're going to come out. Literally, it's going to be random. So make sure the notifications are set, you know, and just don't stress too much about it you know mm -hmm. there's only so much you can do because you can't be on your phone 25 8 be checking it all the time and then like for the one second you don't look it come up you know mm -hmm. That's you can't just live true. your life in stress you can always pick them up on the resale market unfortunately but some of them are actually cheaper like hawk nobody really cares about hawk i guess that much so that's why he's cheap also the zavi pre-orders still say august 30th i just checked last night yep. They have not been canceled. So if you still have Zavi pre-orders, um, hold on to hope. Hold on to those because uh, I'm not going to be too upset if I don't get them because I already have the figures. I'll just mm -hmm. if I want another set that's boxed, I'll just get them. You know. I really hope that pulls through. I that's do too. Just all that I hope because I know a lot of people in the U.S. bought the Zavi pre-order and then didn't get it when it came out for Target. Even though, like, it was available for them maybe to purchase just because they're like, well, I already dropped all this money and Zavi took it already, you know, so. Also, stuff is starting to ship. Yes. Um, I had my, so I collect Funko Pops a little bit still. I dabble in the Fungos. Oh, no. And right now there's a GameStop exclusive collection called the Bounty Hunter Collection. Oh, yep. Um, it's super cool. You've got, it's seven Funko Pops and it recreates the scene from um, ESB uh, where... Um, all the bounty hunters are lined up on the bridge of the Star Destroyer, and Darth Vader's talking to all of them. 
Um, Boba Fett was the first one to come out, then Bosk, then IG-88, and then Forlom, and I missed out on Forlom. I don't know how I did that. I, I'm normally, like, right on top of it with my pre-orders and stuff, but somehow... Did you get I, Bosk? I got Bosk. Bosk is the one that um, is being delivered right now. So oh, if you okay. got Bosk, he is on his way from GameStop right now. Um, and then uh, Carner Jax uh, is, is shipping from Hasbro Pulse mm -hmm. after getting delayed. Um, so, so that's good because he got discontinued. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is good. It's finally going to ship. We have a Jackson rabbit still at our GameStop just sitting there. It'll is be, it still there? Yeah. He's, uh, the one by the movie theater. It'll be one. Yeah. I know our GameStop got in a cow Kestis, but one of my buddy's girlfriends works at GameStop. So now I can know when they get like black series and Funko shipments because she's like, uh, the assistant manager or whatever there. Mm -hmm. So, but at the same time, it's not like we hunt GameStop for figures. We do every so often. If there's something, but we it's dabble. not like, we're, we're not dabble. standing in front of GameStop like we stand in front of Target at 7 a.m. waiting for it to open at 8. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the amount of times we've done that. I feel like such a loser when I do that. Yeah. Because they're, like, they're like, so what are you waiting for? And we're like, toy! Give me toy! <laughs> and we're waiting the people for that are trying to shop. a toy. The one time that we were there, he says, the lady <laughs> buying up all the strawberries, though. When we were buying figures, really? I was like, yeah, because we like bought a figure. And like, then she was like, had her cart with all the strawberries in the store. And I was like, my favorite was one day we were there. We were trying to get the holiday troopers. I forget yes. which one it was for Target. But there was also a black. Which, by the way, new Christmas new Christmas figs are on the way. Yes. A lot of people hate the cool. Christmas line, but I, I love, love them. I love, I love Christmas. It. I love Christmas. It's Christmas so is fun. cool. Give me the figures. But, um. Uh, we there was also a Funko Batman yes. drop the same day, and we were standing in line, and it was there was only four Black Series figures that they had, and it was it was me, I got one, Jackson got one, and my dad got one. I you think. and Dad were ahead of me in line. Yeah, we were ahead of we were ahead person. of yeah we were ahead of them in line, and then this the, the, this large woman buying Funkos goes, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna get the black that that Star Wars figure too because you could probably make some money on that. Which and then she bought know. it in front of Jackson, and Jackson's like, am I going to be able to get one? Yeah, there was like, one left. Literally one left. Six. Which figure was it? The it had... It, no, yeah, it was the um, uh, trooper from Solo that mm -hmm. dressed as Santa. Because that legitimately made me mad. We saw scalping right in front of us from somebody that, yeah. that didn't like Star well, Wars, but knew that they could maybe make because money. Because you could probably make money on that. And they were buying the freaking stupid graffiti Scum. Batman Funk. I'll Slater Funko any day of the week. I have a couple because I like to collect Dude, it. when Funko does those garbage repaints, and it's literally just a figure with just uh graffiti, just, and they, it's they like just an dip artist. it. They just dip it in like a I don't just get a decal. It. It's I terrible. It's their artist collection, their art pieces. <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. an excuse to repack. Funko is literally the worst for repaints because remember, like this year when we've gotten like what five stormtrooper repaints? Yes, they did a gold stormtrooper for they WonderCon. Did, they, they did a gold. They did an old blue one. They did, they the, did rainbow the, one. the rainbow one. The rainbow one. Trooper. They did a comic repaint, and then they did the uh, Valentine's Day one. That's five. The Valentine's Day one didn't come out yet. No, wait, did it? Yes. Okay, because they're doing more Valentine's Day pops. They're doing upcoming. Ahsoka Valentine's. If Day I was pop. ever in a relationship Ahsoka? and a girl got me. A Valentine's Day Funko Pop, I I would just no return okay, but that. If it was return that. If it was the Mandalorian one, I would actually like that because it's great. no. What am I gonna do with that? Like that's the thing is like you you keep it in the box. <laughs> Give me like the... cotton candy or something that I can like <laughs> appreciate. Appreciate. <laughs> appreciate my melon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that just about wraps up this week's episode. I yeah. do have one thing. Okay, if you are if you are a fan of long movies like five hours long there's a oh, guy yeah. on tiktok and youtube called golden guy pictures and he has made a five hour cut of revenge of the sith with revenge of the sith deleted scenes the clone wars and the, the bad batch no jeez it is it is a monster he has it on a google drive file coming out on the 24th of august i believe um it is in 1080p 60 fps super high quality and it's like 24 gigabytes Jeez. It's yes. ginormous. But you can stream it directly from the Google Drive file. I need so to find can... where I have I have the four hour cut. I have the four hour cut as well on my Google Drive. But um 
if you wanted, you can email us and I can maybe send it to you. But no, uh, yes, four five hour cut of the movie. I might watch it. I'll probably have to watch it in segments. I watched the four hour cut all in one sitting. It was pretty good. I liked it a lot because it was pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. But yeah, five hour cut comes out at the end of this month if you're interested in that. Once again, his at is Golden Guy Pictures on YouTube and TikTok. Mm -hmm. So check that out. Check it out if you want to watch a really, really long movie. Wow. That was a good episode. I yeah. really like this. I really hope you enjoyed it because the thing as well is that with last week's episode, I felt like it was dry. I felt like it was the same news, like blah, blah, blah. I was like, people And then it did really going, well. And that made me so happy. Well. Well, it, you guys it's loved it. It's because the, it's because the Legos, my guys. It was the Legos. It's all the Legos. But everybody loved it. And I'm really thankful for that. So I really hope you liked this episode. If you got this far, thank you so much for watching this far. We appreciate it. And thank you for being a reg. We appreciate you red. guys. Yeah, that's so funny. And uh, yeah, that about wraps up the most mediocre podcast in the Star Wars universe. Please like and subscribe. When we get to that 100, we will be making that room tour. Like a lot of you have asked. So share us around. And we're like place. almost there. We are yeah, almost, we're there. almost there. And so it we're, could happen. It's been like, what, two months? Two, three months? This Yeah, recording? something like that. Crap, yeah. yeah. We're going fast. It's been a month because we started in July, didn't we? Something like that. I know, isn't so, that crazy? crazy. But please, be sure to subscribe, like, share us with your friends, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, listen to us on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever podcasts can be listened to. Tell your friends, tell your coworkers, and tell homeless people on the side of the street about us. We appreciate it. We appreciate each and every single one of you guys. Thank you so much for all the support you've been giving us. And leave us um, a comment. I like reading them. Yeah. Yes, we love reading and responding. And uh, yeah, this has been the 1313 Podcast. I'm Peter. I'm Gator. I'm Dylan. Oppa! <laughs> Oppa! Oppa! All right, everybody. See ya! Have a good week. <laughs>